So hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to start a new series of Go programming language. So in the upcoming videos, I will be coming up with uh, more Go practice problems or with Go fundamentals. And we will try to make more tools like what we are going to do today. We are going to make a port scanner today in Go. So mind you that this port scanner is not an advanced one. We will try to make an advanced one in the upcoming videos. But this port scanner will help you to understand how Go works and how a port scanner also works. Okay. So now we are going to start uh, this Go. But before that, we need to understand that how a port scanner works because we need to understand that how a TCP connection works because we are going to build this program for TCP connections for a TCP connection. Okay. Let me just correct it. It's not working. I think. Yeah, now it's working. We are going to do this for TCP. Okay. So if you are a networking guy or uh, if you know about networking, uh, I hope you uh, should know that uh, TCP works in a way called three way handshake. I think you all know about three way handshake, but let me just remind you what three way handshake does or what happens in the three way handshake. Let's say these are two entities. This is my client or my computer. This is a server. So this is a server. So how a connection is, how a successful connection is established in TCP is like this. This my client will send out a SYN packet. S Y N. Okay. And this server sends out in this uh, response S Y N slash A C K packet. Okay. So this packet will be first. I will denote first. This will be second in response to this. So in response to this and uh, for successful establishment of the connection, the my client will send out the third packet or the last packet called as ACK. That is the acknowledgement packet. Okay. And this is how a successful connection in TCP is established. But how about a connection which is not, uh, which could not be established? So let's see how a connection will work if it could not be established. Let me just make it more clear. So if we think that these are two entities, but uh, this is my client, this is a server. So if I sent out a SYN packet for a start of the connection, if the connection or the server is closed or the certain port of the server is closed, then it will send out a reset packet that is RST. Okay. And this way I will know that the port is closed or a server is actually closed. I will say the port is closed because not all ports will be closed. Okay. So if you know that uh, there are almost 65535 ports. Okay. So these much ports are there and we can establish just a connection with one port. Okay. And that will be the phenomenon for only one port. Okay. So what a port scanner does is that it tries from my client to try that all if all these ports are connected or not. So the condition will be that if that if a client uh, if a client is uh, trying to send you the RST packet or the reset packet, then it will be a closed one. And we will consider that the port was closed. So that will be the logic of uh, our port scanner. The next thing will be if a, uh, if a server or the port, a certain port uh, sends out uh, the SYN slash ACK packet, then what will uh, what it will be considered that the port is actually opened okay so that will be our logic but primarily we will be using this logic that is about a reset packet that it will close the connection reset packet actually closes the connection closes 
okay it actually closes the connection so that will be our thing so i hope you understood that uh, what i am trying to say and what our port scanner will do it will try to just see uh, sent out a same packet and if it receives a reset packet or an rst packet then it will be considered that the certain port or the port x is actually closed and all other ports who sent out a different packet it will be considered that those ports are opened okay so that will be our thing so let us dive into our programming so finally we are here in vs code and we will now start our coding so the first thing we do in go language is start a main package that is called as main we import a few packages which are necessary for us like uh, fmt that is a format package which actually uh, lets you format all the strings or uh, helps you in printing out things so the next thing we do is define an entry point that is a main function and this is same to or this is similar to c what we see in c that uh, there we start a entry point uh, called as main only so now we start some things which we need so for making a port scanner we need to uh, do uh, a dialing or i will say that uh, connecting to a network so we need to define some more uh, or import some more modules like uh, what we have done is fmt and we could also do one more that is called as net package okay so we have imported the net module and this net module actually you can see what this net package does is that uh, package net provides a portable interface for network input output so it actually provides our uh, input and output for the networks okay and including tcp ip what we need here okay and that is the thing and there are more details you can refer to the documents from there and there we have what we need to do here we have the dial function what is actually required for us so this dial function actually considers two variables that is con and error this is actually a error variable denoted by err so we are defining these two variables or we are getting these two variables values with the net dot dial function okay so we define that this is the tcp protocol and we need to use tcp protocol and next thing we define is that uh, what the website or the what is the url we are trying to fetch okay or what is the thing we are trying to uh, Uh, connect to okay the next thing we uh, define about the error and we will see it let's do our uh, thing uh, what we have to do uh, in the main function is that uh, we need to consider that uh, this function called as err so what i am doing let's see that uh, what i am doing i am defining this variable and uh, equating this to this net dot dial so we have net dot dial and you can see here uh, vs code is actually helping us that uh, how the net dot dial works actually we have the network string we have to define some uh, we have to define what the network we want to use that is actually in our case is tcp the next thing we need to define about the address what address we are trying to fetch so we are trying to fetch a simple address called as scanme.nmap.org it is actually a free service for you to scan and you can build your own port scanners to scan this website and it is given by the nmap developers only to build your scanners but one thing we are missing is that we need to define what port we want to scan and that will be defined here only if you know the syntax you just need to put a semicolon uh, you need to put a colon and then define a port in this case we are defining a port uh, or we are specifying the port as 80 okay so but before this uh, what is this 
this uh, under space is actually underscore is actually defining that we uh, we don't require this variable to be uh, defined or uh, we just don't need this variable right now okay so if you want that any variable should not be used uh, if it is mandatory then you can just put an underscore there and uh, we have defined the next variable that is error let's see what we can do with error we will write a if statement that will consider that if error is actually nil nil means that the error is actually there is no error okay and it has been successful so if a, a, a error if the error is actually uh, nil then we are defining with the help of format package that print out print ln with the help of print ln function we are printing out that connection was successful okay else 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 we will print out that connection failed i will write connection failed so this is the thing and we are just connecting out to this website or this address using the net dot dial function and we are using tcp protocol and we have already defined what uh, port we want to scan and this actually this uh, error function will check out that if the connection was established or not if the connection wouldn't have been established then there would be some error and it wouldn't be null uh, it wouldn't be nil so that will be thing and this is actually a very simple scanner so let me just check it out uh, but uh, let's see uh, what it actually does so we are here in uh, my command prompt and i am trying to run this uh, go program so i will just use the go command go run and we will spice, uh, specify the path dumb port scanner dot go so i will run it let's see what actually it does so it is saying that expected package found eof let's see what the problem is here if there is some problem we will try to fix it and uh, there is uh, let's see if there is a problem or not I have saved it. Let's try to run it one more time. Let's see if it runs. Yes, it has run and the connection was successful. So if you think that uh, this is joke or something, I will just turn off my connection and we will try to see if this is actually fake or good to go let's see if the connection failed yes the connection failed and i have already dumped out or the uh, uh, or uh, disconnected my computer from the internet so the connection had failed so this proves that uh, our uh, our port scanner our dumb port scanner is actually working well so now we will be doing some more uh, things in this and uh, uh, we, uh, we will be enhancing the capability of this port scanner to scan more than one port at a time because this is very inefficient to scan one port at a time and we will need to just type in one more port next port and next port 81 82 83 just like that in order to uh, find out whether the connection was successful or not or whether the port was port is open or not okay oh, and uh, also you can also write here instead of connection was successful you can uh, write that port uh, 80 was actually uh, is opened okay instead of this okay you can write port 80 is open okay and here you can write port 80 is closed okay that is the thing let's uh, 
now uh, enhance the uh, actual dump port scanner so now let's enhance our port scanner so in order to bring out all those ports to scan let's say if we want to scan 0 to 100 ports then uh, we need to define a for loop why because a for loop will iterate uh, through a number of uh, a number uh, a number a set of numbers so that uh, uh, we can uh, we could ca uh, establish the connections from there okay so we need uh, we define here the for loop and uh, the syntax you can see is uh, i am telling that the initial value is i that is uh, that is zero and uh, we we are trying to get all those ports under 100 okay and then on every iteration we are trying to increase the value of i with one okay so we just need to define about i also i am defining it as an unsigned integer okay the next thing we are trying to do is uh, defining how many ports would be open out let's set this ports variable as one as zero okay since zero ports are open right now and we will try to establish a connection and when a connection is established we will increase the value of ports with one okay let's move this logic of error inside this for loop now uh, what we are trying to see here is that uh, the TCP uh, this dial function is actually what you see here is that this network that is string the uh, the first uh, is also string and this next input it is trying to or the next parameter is trying to get is also a string but since we cannot define here a string with an integer since the integer is i so we cannot establish that scan ma scan me dot nmap dot org uh, uh, this syntax and then uh, reverting it to i okay so we cannot define this and it will not work because it is not a string and we cannot put it in the into the to uh, we cannot put it like this because it will be called as a constant string or uh, it w it won't change actually okay but uh, so what we need to do here is uh, we define an a, a variable and uh, for changing this variable every time we will define it with the special function called as sprintf which is found in format package so here we are trying to uh, what you can see here is that sprintf formats according to the format specifier and returns the resulting string so it outputs a string and uh, we just need to do the we just need to give the format specifier for it so let's see how we can do it so we say that the address is actually scan me dot nmap dot org and then we put the colon and then we say about the format specifier and a format specifier for an integer is ample uh, is percentage d okay okay so percentage d is actually the format specifier and the next thing we do is that uh, define what uh, what variable we are trying to get into it in the place of percentage d okay and the variable is actually i okay so that is a very easy thing now the next thing we want to do or uh, we have actually missed in all the previous programs that uh, we define the connection and we establish the connection as you can see we have established the connection uh, since the error was nil but we didn't close the connection and if you are trying to get into the whole uh, in, in this number of ports that is 100 then you will need to close the connection because the traffic will be heavy then or if you are trying to get all those ports six, uh, 60,000 ports then it will be a he very heavy traffic for you so in order to get this we just define this underscore instead of uh, uh, we just uh, replace this underscore with a variable known as con 
okay and that is a connection variable the so now the next thing is that if an error is nil that means the port is actually open then we just try to close the connection and that we will do with the close function okay and that will actually close the connection if the port is found open otherwise if the port is not open then connection has not been established so there is no need to close the connection okay so now the next thing we want to do is change this string into let's say i is uh, port is open open okay so we are trying to give it and we will say the same thing here and we will say that it is actually closed okay now what we are seeing here is that we have defined that if the connection is actually established then uh, it will print out that this port is open now but if we want to find that how at last how many ports were open we will try to increase the value increase the value of ports as ports plus one okay so now this will actually increase the number of ports as uh, with one if a connection has been successfully established so and at last we will try to print out a, a certain thing or a certain string which will make our program exit or we will uh, which will make our program uh, look good in a certain way so let me just give a certain signals so that will make that this program is actually given the output okay now what we are seeing here at last that uh, the connection uh, or the scanning scan completed we will print out scan completed at the end of the program and next thing we want to print out is that uh, println and we will print out that uh, this number of ports that is ports are open okay so that is the thing so let's look a recap in this and we will then run out the whole program we have defined the main package and you all know that what import does it imports the other packages then we have defined the entry point that is main the next thing we are uh, we are doing that we have defined a variable that is u uh, that is i which actually tries to uh, uh, which is actually the specific number of a port and then we are uh, putting that i into the for loop and then we are increasing the value of i for every increase in the port number okay and we have also defined this ports so that we can get the total number of ports which are actually open okay so the next thing we are doing in the for uh, for loop is that we are defining an address variable or the addr value uh, addr variable that is a string actually with the help of sprintf function uh, which actually takes out uh, the format specifier plus the string and uh, uh, spits out the integer uh, uh, spits out a uh, string okay since we need a string inside the dial function okay so we have defined the tcp you all know that we need to define what connection we have to establish according to tcp or udp or anything else okay and then we have specified what uh, uh, what uh, address we want to get into and the next thing we are defining is the same as what we did previously uh, is to define an error variable if the error is nothing or if the error is nil then we will define that that specific port is actually open and we will try to close this connection since it will be a heavy traffic for us to handle okay and the next thing is that we are defining that uh, we are adding the ports number a plus one uh, so that we can get at last the whole number of ports that are open or else if the connection has not been established or if the connection is not successful then we are printing out that this port i is actually closed 
okay so that will be the thing and then we are printing out the output so it would uh, look clean the signs you are seeing uh, it will make it look clean so now i am running it and i have not established uh, i am not connected to the internet right now but we will see that how it works if it works or not or it gives a false output let's see so i will put out a term port scanner so we are running it let's see oh okay 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 so we have not i have not actually saved the thing so we have saved the thing and you can see that the uh, formatting has been done by go and the extension of go in a very beautiful manner so it will make the uh, code look clean and it will be helpful for you so now we run the program so we now see that uh, all these ports are closed we can see 2 3 4 and so many more and we see that up till the end 99 ports are closed so scan completed and zero ports were open okay so this is the thing and i have already told you that i have not connected to the i am not connected to the internet so now i am trying to connect to the internet i will connect to the internet and let's see what this actually finds out i will rerun this let's see what this does so this says that zero port is closed then it will try to connect to the first port then second then third then going on and on but it will be a very hectic task or a very time taking task so i am not going to do this for all the ports since we know that only port 80 is open for uh, the scan map uh, scanme.nmap.org the free service i will just make this port uh, change the number of ports into let's say 78 78 and move it to uh, let's say 84 yeah it will work so that i can show you that this has worked successfully okay so we will try to scan from 78 to 83 let me bring out the terminal and let run let's run it so now it's running it is running it is running port 78 is closed so it is running port 80 is open so it is giving us a clear indication that the program we have created is running successfully okay let's see if the other ports are open or closed and i hope that all are closed except 80 and 83 should also be closed let's wait for it just a second so that we get and get the whole output or not so scan was completed and you can see it is a good looking thing actually these equal signs so one ports are open okay so we have successfully built out our dumb port scanner it is actually a dumb one since you have already seen that it takes a lot of time to cover out all the ports and we can, it is not an efficient one but it is a good starter for us to understand how tcp works and understand how we can build a port scanner for us okay and also understand that how go works okay so programming in go is actually simple and i will try to bring out more and more programs for us and we will try to move on to exploit development in it also as i progress in my uh, phase that i am learning go already and i am trying to build more and more tools and uh, getting into exploit development then i will try to bring out uh, more content for you uh, in order to get uh, you into the exploit development area and also i will try to give out more malware analysis tools or malware analysis videos also in the upcoming days okay so that will be your notification that uh, two things we are going to do malware analysis and go programming okay so that will be the thing if you like the video please uh, hit the like button and uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed it and share the video if you want to and it will be a good time for me 
and it will be good time for you i think that uh, you have learned go and you have tried to build a tool for you so thank you for this and goodbye